Are we ever going to find out who the Baltimore Ravens are going to be playing in a divisional matchup? Uh, we will hopefully by the end of today. It's looking like it. Even though when you saw videos of Bill Stadium, <laughs> it wasn't looking like it. But this game, of course, was originally supposed to be played yesterday on Sunday uh, at 1 p.m. But, of course, it got delayed today because of the weather. And, and I'm going to always rock with that. I'm gonna always rock with safety first because I get it. Uh, and the way that I saw some videos up there in New York, it, it was looking crazy. Crazy, man. The snowstorm was looking crazy, but even videos from this morning, it was still looking crazy. So, like they say in show business, though, that the show must go on. So, we should be getting Bills and Steelers today. And that, I think, is going to be an extremely close game because the Bills. Well, they they are they are a good team. Uh, obviously, got some good players. One thing about Josh Allen is he will give that opponent some chances with, by turning that ball over. He will keep you in the game uh, by turning the ball over. But then with the Steelers, they are a, a thorn in your side because the Steelers, they won't do any like sexy stuff on the scoreboard or stat wise anything like that. But they will do enough to hang around for three quarters in a game. They'll hang around, hang around, hang around, hang around. And then they just a couple plays in that fourth quarter. Uh, and, and they'll either take the lead, they may get the win, but they'll always be right there in the thick of things. So this game, it's going to be a, a good one, I, I think. It's, I think it's going to be an ugly one, but I, I think it should be a good one. Now, uh, pending the results of this game, because like us as Ravens fans, we've just been waiting and waiting. Obviously, we ain't seen the Ravens play in what feels like two months, but now we've been waiting to see uh, who are the Ravens going to play next. A lot of people are obviously expecting it to be the Houston Texans, but it's not a sur sure thing that it is the Houston Texans. But that's why the games are played. But anyway, because because a lot of us, I know myself, it was feeling like, oh, it, it, it's just meant to be where Joe Flacco coming to M&T Bank Stadium and that they're going to play the Ravens. That, that's what it was seeming like it was going to end up being. But Texans said, Browns? What? Them? You? Oh, yeah. Nah, watch this. And they took care of business in a big way. But anyway, um, if the Ravens play the Texans, that game will be on Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Uh, but if the Steelers pull the upset on the Bills, then that game will be on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. Now, if, if y'all had to choose, which one would y'all prefer? I, I would prefer a, a Sunday night game uh, versus Saturday. I mean, really, at the end of the day, it don't matter. But that's what I would prefer, just because of the time, just because it's Sunday. Sunday just got them football vibes, you know what I mean? Saturday, it could have it too. It could be a little weird sometimes, but it's, Sunday is just Sunday. But either way, um, and as far as teams that I prefer, either one, either one. Because like it's like with the Baltimore Ravens, whoever they were going to be going up against in a divisional round was going to be a team that they faced already. It's going to be a team that they would familiarize themselves with earlier this season at some point because it was either going to be the Texans, the Browns, the Dolphins, or the Steelers. And they've played all of those teams already. So uh, it's going to be a game. It's going to be a tough game regardless. I know some Ravens fans are like, hey, we got to get our get back for Pittsburgh. They swept us this year. And even though you kind of feel like that, the sweep got a little asterisk on it because Ravens didn't play a lot of the starters. But hey, Steelers got the win. So they technically swept us this year. Um, so Ravens fans like, hey, we want to get that get back against Steelers and, and just get rid of this whole little narrative that Lamar can't play against the Steelers and this and that and then the whole playoff narrative to get that out the way. Then it's like, hey, we want to face the Texans. Texans, hey, I saw somebody say Texans season started in Baltimore and it's about to end in Baltimore. I said, oh, oh, oh yeah, I like that. One. That's cool. I think I think it was my guy uh, Spencer Schultz. But um, anyway. Whoever the Ravens are going to play, it's playoffs. You can't run from nobody. You can't be scared of nobody. Oh, I'm, I don't want to play that team. No, it's playoffs. You made it here for a reason, right? To play the, to be the best, you got to beat the best. Um, but anyway, we'll see how that ends up shaking out. Now, um, I figure, you know what? We got a little ways till the game starts. The game starts at 430. I know it's going to be a lot of people that's, that's still at work at that time. So I know that, like, the, the whole schedule just – when schedule schedules change, it's crazy. I'm sure there were some people that bought flights out to Buffalo, the Buffalo area, uh, and they were probably going to be flying back on Monday morning. But then when the game got shifted, that changes everything. So do you call off of work or do you like, oh, no, I got to cancel the whole trip? It's, it's crazy, man. So I, I do feel for people. But, again, 
Safety, safety, safety is first. Uh, but anyway, I figure, you know what? While we're waiting for the game, let's do some questions from Team Keep It Clean. Might as well, right? So before we get into it, I got to say, if you want to be a part of questions from subs, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, uh, you can send a question directly on Patreon. And shout out to some of the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons, my guy uh, Joshua DV. Just became a patron eight hours ago. So just did. And shout out to my guy, uh, A.W. Juice Man, uh, as well. Uh, so I, I appreciate y'all. And some other new patrons. My guy, Arnold, he became a patron on uh, January 5th. Uh, my guy, Eli, he became a patron on January 2nd. Dakari became one on January 2nd. LaKendrick became one. Oh, no. He, excuse me. I read it wrong. LaKendrick canceled the membership. He said, I'm out of here, buddy. But that's okay. I, I still I appreciate any new team keep it clean patrons, any old team keep it clean patrons. If you ended up canceling, I get it. It's fine. I respect it and I respect you and I love you. I really do. Uh, if you would like to become a team keep it clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz. If you don't want to, that's perfectly fine as well. Y'all know I'm going to love y'all regardless. It's like straight up, man. But to get into this first question uh, from a Team Keep It Clean patron, uh, the first one, uh, it came from my guy Derek. And he said, fear of the Texans? Okay, he said, Raven. Uh, what's going on? It's A.W. Juice, man. I'm finally back, going through a little bit of a trial and tribulation throughout 2023. But I'm back, and I'm good with that being said. Hey, I'm glad you got through. Whatever you had to go through, I'm, I'm glad you got through it, man, because that's the most important thing. Because we all got stuff that we got to go through, which is it sucks, it's, it's frustrating, it's stressful, it's unfortunate. But if we get through it, we could look back and be like, oh, I, I, I did that, we did that. And, and it just really makes you feel good about yourself and good about your current situation and what you overcame. So I'm, I'm glad you got through it all, man. He said, I'm nervous about those Texans, man. For one, they have nothing to lose but everything to gain. And two, you know CJ Stroud wants his revenge. I heard the uh, FX sounds of the game, and none other than our almighty Roquan Smith was giving him an air force, saying he's a rookie. He's a bleeping rookie. LOL. I love the intensity, but I think CJ wants to bring it in. Speaking of CJ, he's doing this in his first year and what we're hoping Lamar can do in his sixth year, and that's go in a playoff game with very appealing stats. Thank you, and God bless you and the wife and Carter and your dog. And P.S. The goatee looks sharp on you, brother. I appreciate it. There was some people that somebody in the comment section said, oh, man, engraving goatee looks racist. <laughs> what? But then somebody else said, oh, engraving rocking the, the Greg Roman goatee for the playoffs. Uh, okay, well, I'll I tell you. But anyway, um, me, I, I get you being nervous about the Texans. I'm going to be nervous about whoever the Baltimore Ravens play because it's playoffs. It, it's a playoff game. So, Again, like we always talk about with playoffs, this is it. Like, this is it. You either win and keep going or you lose and your season is done. Like, it's done. I Man, I, I, I would, would not be able to imagine because, I mean, I've seen so many, uh, like the Cowboys probably been the biggest one, um, where you just seen so many memes, so many people saying this and that, making fun of them and all that. Like, I can't, I can't imagine because it's like, that's it. That's it, and that is so frustrating because your season's done. You you can't do anything now. That's that's a wrap. Your season is over with, man. So Ravens, like I I, I am confident that they're gonna take care of business. I'm still be nervous, but I am confident that they're gonna take care of business against whoever they face. But I get being nervous about the Texans. I get being nervous about whoever. But with the Texans, yeah, they playing some great football. C.J. Stroud is, is an amazing quarterback, and one thing about him, he is very careful with the ball. He's very careful. He takes his risk though. He takes his risk. He takes, like, calculated risk. But he's very careful. He protects the ball, but still he gets after it. But this Baltimore Ravens defense, um, I feel like they're in a much better spot now than they were when they played him before. And obviously that was the first game of the season. That was the first game of the year. And it was a good game. He did not throw no – he ain't throw no interceptions at all. He ain't throw no picks. But um, now you have a uh, – we didn't have Kyle Vinoy back then. We didn't have Marlon Humphrey. Uh, for that game uh, I mean <clears throat> Again The Ravens still took care of business The Texans still brought it And I know they're still gonna bring it um, Cause they got Will Anderson Being a ball But they, It's gonna be a, it, will, it will be a, a good game With its own challenges This time around As well Just like it was last time around Like I remember During that game Ravens were up They went up at half They were up at half time They were up coming out of half time They were up for a while But It just didn't feel like They were up Like they were it just felt like it was just a really close game, but um, and it wasn't no blowout or nothing like that. But still, so but it did, and this, while Ravens are a different team, C.J. Stroud he's a different quarterback right now. 
that was his very first NFL game. Like, he got plenty of experience now. He's much more comfortable now. So, yeah, man, it, it's going to be tough regardless, man. So, we'll see how this thing ends up going. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll just rock out from there. Uh, next question also came from my guy, Josh, who, again, he just became a Team Keep It Clean patron. He said, I appreciate you and everything you do for Team Keep It Clean. You're an amazing role model and a person. Oh, no, I ain't, I ain't either one of those two, but I appreciate you. He said, I wish nothing but success for you and the family. I got a long message slash question for, for a question from subs. If you can answer it. All right, here we go. Here we go. <coughs> here we go. said, uh, what's up, Engraven? I've been watching uh, since probably 2019. <laughs> when you were rocking the single earbud mic. Oh, but since, it, well, if that was the case, that was before uh, 2019 then. Um, because... We yeah, the single ed that that was that actually might have been like 2017, 2018. Cause when we started doing this full time, um, that was in August of twenty eighteen, because it was a yellow mark got drafted when we started doing it full time. Um, but before then, uh, cause we were still working at our regular job and, and that's when we had the car videos with the earpiece in. So yeah, I, but either way, I appreciate you been around for a long time. So thank you. Uh, he said, um, love seeing the channel grow along with your family. Uh, congrats on a new blessing to the family. Hey, I, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Uh, he said, I started watching your channel because it's hard to get good Ravens news out here in Seattle. Oh, you out there. Oh, so that 2019 game, you must have had a lot of fun. That 2023 game, you must have had a lot of fun. Whenever the Ravens play the Seahawks with Lamar, you must have a lot of fun. But anyway, uh, he said, the beatdown on the Hawks was just so good being around a lot of Hawks fans. I never thought of reaching out with a question because Team Keep It Clean does an amazing job of asking some good questions and you provide amazing answers for them. I agree with the first half of that part, that question or that statement, but the second half, I don't know about no amazing answers. But anyway, he said, I, I watch your videos every day and uh, get all my Ravens news from you, so I appreciate it. And I appreciate you, man. Got two questions for you. All right, here we go. I'm almost done with school to become a nurse, and I really want to be posi a positive and humble person. Uh, how do you keep such a positive energy with you and have such good connectivity with people? Uh, I feel like you have good, such good energy in every video, and you treat Team Keep It Clean like family. I, th I think it's because Team Keep It Clean is family. Like, think about it. We, we talk every single day. We talk every single day. We, we, we talk, and a lot of it is about raving. Sometimes we go off on some side stuff, some side quests and whatnot to talk about that. But we talk literally every single day. So we all family. Um, and another thing about, I guess, with the positivity is, um, uh, is I think it's important to... Uh, to be positive. Nah, I ain't positive twenty four seven. I got no negative moments. I got times I get upset. I get angry. I get ticked off. Whatever. Um, but <clears throat> it's it's important to it's the word balance. I guess balance. Um, but really, even on here, um, on here on the channel it is is it's very important. I always say this is very important that my my goal with starting the channel was for people to have a a, a good positive outlet <clears throat> because there's enough enough negativity that goes on in the world every single day you watch the news you talk to your friends family talk to different people and it's just it's crazy out here it's crazy out here it's a rough world that we live in the the system is just all messed up and we and it's just it, it's just so messed up so for me to come on here and add even more to that for what that that'd be pointless that'd be that'd be pointless that'd just be adding to it um and even when like even in with like with the ravens for example cause we, we get upset with different stuff that they would do we disagree with some different moves that they would make a move that they wouldn't make it will express it but i think it's, it's still even when you disagree with something it's, it's important to respect express yourself with respect um so that's just and that's what team keep it clean is, is about it's about keeping it clean it's about uh an environment that's welcoming for everybody everybody can come through um so yeah I, I think it's just all about uh perspective with being positive i think it's about perspective how you view things how you look at things um and just i i think that's probably the biggest thing i would say uh he also said <clears throat> do you think that if we do lose patrick queen that Trent Simpson would be a good replacement. He balled out the last game and also had some flash, flashes of potential. Um, I do think that is the plan in place. I think they want to keep Patrick Queen, but I, I think they're capped on how much they would pay Patrick Queen if he were to stay. I think he'd get a lot more money elsewhere. 
He get a whole lot more money elsewhere. I think if he did get a deal with the Ravens, it would uh, it would be a very modest deal compared to money he could probably get elsewhere. I wonder if it'll be one of those things. Well, Ravens might not even really have a choice because if I'm Patrick Queen, I'm I'm looking at other offers. Like I'm sure Ravens probably offered him something, but if I'm him, I'm looking at that. Oh, let me see what else I can get elsewhere. And he could go shop around, and maybe he shops around, and teams are like, oh yeah, Patrick Queen, this this could be our guy. Oh yeah, this 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 dude is the truth. Oh yeah, we love Patrick Queen. We'll bring him into our system. He'll flourish. Or if he can go look at other teams and they'll be like, huh, okay, well, we don't see him as being the guy at inside linebacker, but he could be a good complimentary piece and maybe they offer him a complimentary deal. Uh, but if it's something around where the Ravens are offering too, maybe he comes back. Uh, I don't foresee that. Ha- it's possible, but I, I, I for, just foresee him just getting more money elsewhere. And I can't be mad at him for that, but I think Trent Simpson was – for that he was that uh that player that's a dynamic player as we saw in that Steelers game um he's fast he can move he like he was all over man I was like okay oh this is why they got him all right um but I, I do uh <clears throat> I, I think Patrick Queen is gone but I do think the the Trent Simpson was their sort of backup plan uh he also said do you think that the Ravens will try to keep OBJ next season or is he a goner sorry for the long message keep being amazing keep inspiring others thanks again no man no no need to thank me I I, I appreciate you um uh, for OBJ if Ravens win the Super Bowl I think he's gone um so so yeah I, I think OBJ will be gone next year next question came from my guy Jarvo he said the playoffs are here special shout out to you for getting your question answered by Marlo on his podcast oh yeah that was cool shout out to Jack Settlement man Shout out to Jack Settleman, um, Marlon Humphrey for answering our questions, and a lot of other Ravens content creators. Uh, that that was cool, um, being able to have that that feature on there. Uh, so that that was nice, man. Um, he said, "My question for you is: with the mystery behind Tyus Bowser, do you see us releasing or trading him this off season?" Uh, yeah, I, I think Tyus Bowser is going. And yeah, I, I like how you said that the mystery uh, surrounding uh, Tyus Bowser. It's been really weird. But yeah, I think he's out of there. Because um, with the Ravens, it's like they already saw what life was like without him. They did sign Jadavion Clowney. They did sign Calvin Noy. Um, but they drafted Trent Simpson. Uh, Malik Harrison, he had been there. Uh, and just going through all the different outside linebackers that they got. Um, and obviously with. Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, both inside linebackers, but still, like they they saw life without Tyus Bowser. They know what life is like without Tyus Bowser. So, um, I think next year officially, uh, they're gonna move forward in life without Tyus Bowser. Next question came from some random guy. He said, "I get that Joe Flacco is the op now. Well, it was because it's over now. But anyway, he said, but why is there so much animosity towards him? Ravens fans that are so gung ho about wishing the worst for him is weird to me. He delivered us our last Super Bowl win against the 49ers, and now we act like we can't support him where he goes. I support him, just not against the Ravens. Period. I've seen some stuff on Twitter that made me sick. Appreciate you for what you do, dog. I love your work and keep pushing to 100K subs. I appreciate that. And you are not." Some random dumb guy We gotta change that name But anyway um, With the whole Flacco thing man Oh goodness I'm almost glad that it's over Cause pe- people can be very ugly Now I can't tell you who to root for And who not to root for But this is where people get ugly Because people try to Again they, they try to grab these championship belts Like hey I'm the best fan that there is I'm the best fan that there was And I'm the best fan that there ever will be you're never going to be a, as good of a Ravens fan as me ever, buddy. And it's like, relax. It's, it's okay. Um, cause, and, and with the whole Joe Flacco thing, people be like, oh, well, you, uh, you're fake if you do this, if you're fake if you do that. Or, yeah, right, yeah. And it's like, I, I, I will never understand um, why people get so caught up in how other people fan. How, how other people choose to cheer, celebrate, be a fan of whatever team. I, I, and, and people get caught up in how other people do that. Not how they, them, they themselves, but how other people do it. It's like, oh, why, why is so much energy being invested in that? You're, you're, you're investing so much of your energy and your time into worrying about how somebody else is doing their thing. 
It's just it was always so weird. Now with the Flacco, I because people oh you, people you, you can't cheer for Joe Flacco on the Browns. So okay, I get that because again, if Browns have success, <laughs> that would interfere with Ravens' success. <laughs> we don't want that at all, buddy. Um, it was cool to see Joe Flacco do his thing. It, it, it was cool to see Joe Flacco just the uh, the the semi reemergence of Joe Flacco. Um. It, it was nice seeing him out there because you, you thought about the memories. You thought about, oh, when Joe Flacco was with the Baltimore Ravens, you thought about the playoffs, the success and all that. And then um, it got to the point where it was like, hi, Joe. <laughs> like, oh, chill out, buddy. You're getting a little close now. Uh, but no, it's, it's all good, man. He, um, I, I think with Joe Flacco, though, he just showed, like, especially in the playoff game, he was like, oh, I'm still a raver. I got y'all boys. Watch this. Watch this. So he, it's like he took Browns through this roller coaster. He took the, and I mean, he did that plenty of times when he was officially with the Baltimore Ravens, but now that he was with the Browns, uh, he, he joined them. But again, he was, he was a, a double agent because he signed with the Browns, joined the Browns, and had them winning. They actually had a chance for the number one seed at one point, too. But um, he had them winning, and it was like, all right. We got some hope. We got we got Joe Flacco, and we know how Joe Flacco does in the playoffs. And it was like, oh, okay, yeah. So then uh, he took the Browns, brought them from out of the slumps, and then had them with a nice record, had them winning, had them in the playoffs, and then he went and did that. And he was like, oh no, I I, I got the Ravens back for sure. The next question came from my guy Daryl. He said, hey, I'm a big fan of the channel. How's the family doing? Hey, we we were doing great, man. I appreciate you. Uh, and he said, with all the free agents that's coming up this offseason, who do you think they'll re-sign? Or do you think they'll re-sign Justin Matabike and franchise tag Patrick Queen? Um, hey, well, like, look, Patrick Queen, he, he said that everybody was was looking too hard into everything. We were listening too much and whatnot. Because um, remember the whole the whole video that he put up with uh, Matabike. But, um, like, look, man, uh, yeah, I, I think Matabike, I think they'll get it done with Matabike. I think they'll get it done with him for sure. With Patrick Queen, I do not have the confidence that they will get it done with him. Because, again, like we talked about, I think he'll get more and, and better money elsewhere. Um, if he was willing to take something crazy low under the market value, obviously wouldn't be top linebacker money because they already given top linebacker money to Roquan Smith. But if Patrick Queen was willing to take something like disrespectfully low, which I would hate for him to do that. I would hate to see anybody do that. Like, go get your bread, man. Um, but if he took something like crazy low, then I could see him staying. Other than that, nah, he's gone. 